<laughs> okay. So shall I start? Okay. So today I'm going to uh, discuss uh, my project, uh, Subuser, uh, which is a security system for Linux. Um, basically, the problem that Subuser is trying to solve is uh, the the problem that. Despite the fact that Linux security is supposedly a very serious thing and nobody can get root access, uh, your actual user data is completely insecure on 100% of Linux systems. Uh, and uh, when I download a program, if I download a screensaver or whatever the hell I download, I download Angry Birds, uh, that program can access my bank account trivially. Uh, so, there's no security whatsoever on the Linux desktop right now. Uh, because, uh, how, how many of you have downloaded a program before in your lives? Raise your hands. Uh, okay. Uh, and how many of you have 100% trusted the program that you downloaded? All the time? All the time, yes. Every program you download, you trust it 100%. None of you. Okay. Completely insecure. So, uh, the solution is to make it so that each program isn't running as your user, but it's running as some other user that's not you, and it has limited access to your user account. So you want to have a sub-user for each program. Uh, so, this is your Linux desktop with sub-users, the programs aren't connected together, they're all isolated, and the access to your actual user account is limited. Uh, every program has its own home directory. Uh, this is nice for a lot of reasons. Uh, not just security, it's also nice because when I use Firefox, I've always wondered what files I need to back up in order to actually have my Firefox settings saved. And it turns out there's a lot of them. There's the gconf settings, there's the dbus stuff, There's dot local. I didn't even know about this until I started using subuser and I had a separate home directory for each program. So it's really nice from an analysis standpoint as well. Um, but of course you don't want your programs to be completely isolated from each other. You need them to be able to work with the files that they need to work with. For example, Firefox, you want to be able to download things and sometimes upload them as well. So we give Firefox access to the downloads directory in your home user, uh, your, your home dir, your normal home dir. And with Vim, I open up files with Vim. So I give Vim access to my current working directory. Uh, but I don't give it access to my whole home directory because it doesn't need it. Hmm. So I, I don't know if you guys have heard of App Armor. It's a really similar concept. You have a profile. And you give each program a list of things it's allowed to access. Uh, with subuser, we also have a per permissions list for each program. And that permissions list is a lot simpler than subusers, uh, or but, than app armors. I'll explain why later, but it is. Firefox has a very simple list. It can access the internet. It can access X11. Uh, it can display Windows. And it can access your downloads directory. And that's all they need to list. Everything else is just magically contained. Um, you can think of these permissions, if you don't know about App Armor, like on Android. When you install a program on Android, it asks you, it gives you a list of the things the program needs to be able to do, and you can say confirm or deny. But Subuser is much better than Android because on Subuser you can change the permissions list. On Android it's just like, download me and accept. But on the subuser, you can just say, I don't want you to make phone calls. Why does Angry Birds need to make phone calls anyways? So this is better. Uh, how does it work? So uh, subuser runs each uh, program in its own Linux container. Uh, so a Linux container is a specially contained process. 
uh, in practice, uh, so, so Linux containers are, are being managed by a program called Docker. And uh, in practice, it's pretty much the same as having a virtual machine in your computer. Uh, you have an image, uh, just like in a virtual machine, and you can boot it, and you can run a program in it. Uh, but uh, unlike uh, the virtual machine type systems, uh, with uh, Linux containers, uh, it's very fast. Uh, it's actually a lot, in, in reality, it's a lot more like shroot, ch, ch root. Uh, so there's no overhead whatsoever. Uh, so this system has more than just some security implications. Uh, I actually started using it because I'm using this programming language called Haskell, which has a problem, which is that uh, you're never able to actually install anything in Has that's like or build anything that's written in Haskell because there's lots of version incompatibilities. So you can only build one program at a time, but not any of the others. Uh, and Docker Linux container things solve this because you can build every program in its own container and they won't interfere with each other. Uh, it also solves the problem of uh, being able to install things across distributions because the installation process is the same. It's running inside an image and it's fully contained. So there's really no problem with that. And from a security standpoint, it's really nice that I can run Debian Wheezy, but I can install up-to-date software. So I can use a stable system, but I can s install up-to-date so software that doesn't clobber the rest of my system. Uh, and of course, it separates the processes. Um, for subuser, I wanted it to be really ins simple to install, which means that I've actually sabotaged the project a little bit. I decided to have no external library dependencies whatsoever, uh, which has been controversial among some uh, people because they think it would be a lot easier to just like use libraries for certain things like command line argument parsing and such. Uh, it requires git and oh x11. Right now uh, subuser is completely insecure because it, it actually allows x11 programs to communicate with the x11 server directly and the big major thing for the next release will be that we will be doing everything through SSH with the security extensions, so it'll be somewhat sort of secure. Uh, so right now it's completely insecure. And also, actually, installing Docker means that your user it has root equivalent privileges, which is also kind of insecure, potentially. Um, so you can download subuser at subuser.org. Uh, nobody actually uses QR codes, but it looks pretty. And now I'm going to make my demo. So my demo is actually that this entire presentation uh, has been done in LibreOffice, and the LibreOffice is actually running inside a Docker container. Uh, so this entire presentation has a be been a demonstration of that. So if I go uh, to open a file, um, there's no icons. Uh, this is a bug. Uh, but I, I look in my home directory and there's nothing. It's completely empty. And I actually have access to this other uh, folder called the PWD uh, print working directory. And here is the working directory from which I launched uh, LibreOffice. LibreOffice has no access to anything else on my system except for these <coughs> files. Uh, so, now let's go and uh, try to uh, like use subuser for something interesting. Um, uh, my pre uh, my uh, demo is going to be that I'm going to install some random program from GitHub. Uh. <laughs> Maybe you just missed it, but the, the permissions are checked according to file paths or some, something else? Uh, okay, so permissions, um, if I go to programs that can be installed, Firefox, every program has a permissions.json file, and this is a white list of things it can do. Uh, so 
I say that uh, it's allowed to access the user here downloads. Um, it's allowed to display X11 windows. It's allowed to play sounds. Uh, and it's allowed to access the internet. Things I don't list in this file are forbidden. Uh, so. Okay, but all the libraries and things you need all to specify them. No, that's the, that's a great advantage of subuser over app armor. Okay. That you don't need to specify anything because the things that are inside the container are already contained. Okay. Okay. So since it's in, since the system files are inside the container, I don't need to specify them. I don't need to worry about them. Uh, so Firefox is really easy to set up uh, on subuser. The Docker file looks like this. So I start with <coughs> libx11, which is a magic, uh, which is just shared uh, uh, shared information. So you don't have multiple containers installed in your system that are t wasting space. So I start from this shared foundation, and I do apt-get update, and then I do apt-get install Firefox. And Firefox is installed through the normal method on Ubuntu inside this virtual machine or this container. Uh, this lightweight vir virtual machine. And then I set up by actually mounting uh, the downloads folder into, uh, so I mount the downloads folder into the virtual machine, and then the virtual machine only even knows that the downloads folder exists. It doesn't even know that any other folders on my system exist even. Uh, so it's not like it can walk around my directory tree asking asking if it can access things. It just sees a very, very reduced uh, view of my system. Yes? OK, when I want to allow Firefox to access another folder which is not specified in this permission.json file, do I have to restart, restart all the virtual machines or just the Firefox machine? Or just the Firefox machine, yes. Yeah, so, but I have to, have to close it. Uh, yes, usually, uh, usually when I want to upload something, I copy it to the downloads directory. Okay. Uh, but I do have to restart Firefox, um, and I think that it's good that it's that way because it would be less secure if it was dynamic, I think. Um, if I can show you what it's actually, so I don't know how many of you guys have used Docker, but if I do subuser dry run, uh, D uh, Firefox. This is the command that subuser is generating to run Firefox when I type the Firefox command. Uh, so it uh, says networking is allowed, and then it has these volumes. So it uh, gives Firefox the <coughs> home directory. Uh, it uh, give, it loads some scripts into the container. It gives it access to the uh, downloads directory. It gives it access to temp. Uh, dot x11 minus unix, and this is the thing we want to change. We want to change that to actually doing ssh. It gives it access to dev sound, and it gives it uh, s uh, cgroup permissions to actually access dev sound. Um, if you look at this list, you might notice that it does not have access to the graphics card. I have a separate version of Firefox that is able to do WebGL. Um, and the reason why I don't want to have WebGL and graphics card access enabled by default is because it's just another thing that could be insecure. Um, but you can, so, so if, if I do this, I can start up a new Firefox uh, that's running with WebGL. And actually, since my internet banking is done through uh, uh, Firefox, I have another program, another version of Firefox with its own home directory that is able to do internet banking stuff. So the internet banking stuff is also confined from my normal Firefox. Um, so, where was I? I was showing you guys that I've been looking for a tool that can convert text to uh, PDF files. Uh, and I found this GitHub, direct, uh, GitHub repo that has this wonderful program text to PDF. It's in a repo called Text Tools, and I want to run this program. So what do I do? I download, I, I git clone, I press make install, and I run the program, right? Of course, I've just given some random bit of code that I don't trust at all, uh, root access to my machine and access to all my files. 
this is the normal way of doing things, and all of you have done this many times in your lives. Uh, raise your hand if you haven't. You haven't, okay, <laughs> okay. But everyone else has. Uh, so instead of doing this, um, and instead of reading the entire source code to the damn thing, I'm going to uh, write my own, uh, uh, I'm going to write my own uh, sub-user configuration for this. So I go into the sub-user directory. I'm here right now, right, sub-user. And I'm in the programs that can be installed directory. And I create a new directory. Uh, and I make their text to PDF, which is the name of the executable that I want to uh, install. Uh, programs are installed in an executable by executable basis and not on a like application by application basis. Uh, and then in that directory, I need to create a permissions.json file. Uh, and I've done so. You can find out what permissions you can give uh, your program by uh, going to the subuser uh, by going to subuser.org. and uh, going to the docs directory and going to permissions.json file format and you can see a list of all of the permissions we can give a uh, program. You can see there's quite a few of them, like webcam, for example. Every device in your system has to have a different permission for it. We don't do any kind of blanket uh, allowances. So the Skype one is pretty scary. It pretty much has full access to my system. Uh, Let's look at that for a second. Uh, programs that can be installed. Uh, Skype. Permissions.json. It has X11 access, sound card access, webcam access, and network access. Um, but it doesn't have access to my Mozilla directory, which is one of the things that when they made the AppArmor profile for Skype, they found out that Skype was trying to access uh, home Mozilla which was kind of strange. Uh, and why? <laughs> what? Why it was trying to access it? No one knows. It's not open source. It's not like they could just like look at the source code. You can like look like what it's trying to access it. I don't know. I just read that. Um, so if you're going to install Skype, definitely don't install it except through through subuser or with an AppArmor profile <laughs> at least. Um, so are we? Uh, so we've created our permissions.json file. It's really short. I, I write a description of my program. I tell myself I'm the maintainer, which is not necessary, actually. Uh, I tell it where to find the executable for the, for the program. And I say it can access the current working directory. What does this mean? So when I run text to PDF, it can't access the internet. It can't access my home directory. It can't access anything except for the things I've listed here. Uh, so it's really confined. Um, and then I need to create a Docker file. And you can find out about how, create, how to create a Docker file at docker.io. And it's really simple. Basically, you write a bash script to install the program on Ubuntu. And then you ins add the word run before every line in your bash script. Uh, so you put a Docker file in the Docker image directory, and here's how it works. You say from Ubuntu, so I'm going to start with a base Ubuntu installation, and then I'm going to run app get update, app get install, build essential, build blah 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 dev dev dev. I'm going to make a directory, uh, and I'm going to get uh, the program from GitHub. <coughs> and then I'm going to do the make install stuff, auto gen config make make install. And this will set up a new Docker image, which is like a virtual machine, that has just uh, the text tools installed in it. And f within this virtual machine, I can run, uh, or within this Docker container, I can run uh, the program. So I've done that. And in order to install the text tools, I then run uh, subuser install text to PDF. And it takes a while, obviously. 
it has to install quite a bit more than if I were to install it normally because it has to install build essentials again. Yes? What's the overhead? In what? A matter of space and computation. Uh, okay, the overhead right now is uh, about 200 megabytes per program uh, in terms of disk space. Uh, <laughs> And uh, in terms of RAM, there's no overhead whatsoever. In terms of startup time, there's about a four second overhead. Or no, not a four second, I'll show you. So I have Vim. I, I've write, written all of this uh, with only VI and uh, the basic Debian packages installed. So I, I, wrote, I wrote the basics of subuser in VI. And then I installed Vim through subuser. And I've been editing all of this in Vim. And I don't have Git installed at all. I have Git installed through subuser as well. So uh, it's not that bad. I can use it, but uh, and can you use it someone else than you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. Um, where were we? Um, <laughs> and did you think uh, about the scalability once you have like uh, more programs in the subuser <coughs> with uh, different permission? Just keeping track of uh, what directories you allow for each program and uh, how they are cross cross referencing itself. Okay. Will be a mess. If, uh, well, actually, it's pretty simple because with Firefox you give it access to the downloads directory. With most programs, you're going to only give it access to the files that you explicitly pass to it on the command line, right? If I want to vim. Uh, filled text, I don't need Vim to be able to access any files except for the filled text file. Okay, but uh, then you either need to uh, manipulate the files uh, that you need to uh, that you want to process by uh, copying them to those uh, respective directories of, the, of each program, so you can throw it there. And either you are moving uh, one file between different directories for each program that you want to touch it, or you are making excessive copies of them. And you are lost in versions. No. Uh, so we're doing this by mounting volumes to the to the containers. When I launch Vim, I mount the current working directory that it's launched from to the container. Uh, there's no copying involved. I'm simply mounting something into a fruited environment. Oh, that's so. So like when I do vim filled text, you can see how long it takes to start up. I don't know how long that was. Three seconds. Three seconds. Okay. Well, I'm sure it'll get better. This is on our to-do list. Do you have SSD? I have, no, I have some horrible two terabyte hard drive. Okay. And uh, you're, you're able to run this only in Ubuntu or in general it's like portable? Uh, it's some, some user system. Uh, on the subuser system, is it possible to run in any general Linux, or is it some, somehow specific? Uh, it, it is specific in that it requires Docker, and Docker is specific that in that it requires a Linux kernel version 3.8 or higher. Mm -hmm. uh, which, it's actually been ported back to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which runs 2.6, mm -hmm. uh, but it, in reality it requires 3.8 or higher. And you really should be using the latest kernel version uh, because uh, there can be security flaws in the Linux containers. They're relatively new. Um, but in terms of actual subuser stuff, subuser is written in Python. I try to maintain compatibility between version 2.7 and higher. Uh, so I, I try to maintain compatibility with 3.0 as well. And there's no external library, so it's pretty portable. Um, okay. It does have the limitation, though, that it requires a 64-bit Linux installation. It can't run on ARM. Um, there's no real reason why um, it can't run on ARM. Uh, but uh, since the, well, Docker, mm, the base image, Ubuntu, is uh, shipped as a 64-bit binary. You can build your own images, which another person that was working on Subuser actually set up. And that should be able to run on any architecture. But it's not supported. It's, it's not tested or supported at all. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so that was, uh, so let me see. Did we finish installing that program? Yes, we did. So 
Installation OK. Texty PDF has been installed with the following permissions. And now that we've installed it, we can run Text to PDF. So, so let's uh, text to PDF uh, permissions.json. I haven't actually tested whether the program works. OK. So I just ran text to PDF on permissions.json. And I downloaded the program fr from the internet. But uh, when I wrote, ran it, uh, it was only ac able to access uh, three files on my system. It was able to access permissions.json and the Docker file in that subdirectory. If you were to run it in your home directory, uh, so your current working directory was your home directory, it would have access to your entire home directory. But if I run it in a subdirectory, then it only has access to that subdirectory. Uh, I've kind of been thinking about having it so that it would only be able to access the programs that were listed in the, on the command line. Uh, that's certainly possible, but there's a few problems with that. Uh, the main problem is like Vim creates the swap file. And uh, partial views of directories would be a problem because if Vim is able to see the Vim file, the, the file that it's supposed to be editing, but it's not able to see that a swap file already exists because the swap file hasn't been mounted to its workspace, then that could cause a strange conflict. Do you understand? Uh, so it's much harder to make it so that it would be able to uh, open only a single file that was given. Uh, so it, it's much easier to give it access to the whole directory. And also, like, git requires access to the whole directory. And since I run git in it, then that's nice. So let's see if it actually worked. I didn't test whether it worked. Or perhaps it's not even important. Uh, it's, it's really not important whether it worked. Because <laughs> the, the presentation was the fact that you can install a program very easily. And it's secure once you install it. <laughs> it it's safe to do this, right? <laughs> if it doesn't work, then it's secure. OK, OK, OK. Let's try this, OK? Uh, uh, Let's see if I still have any RAM for another Firefox instance. I end up with a lot of Firefox instances because I have one Firefox that's just bare Firefox, and then I have another Firefox with Flash installed, and another Firefox with Java installed, because of course I don't want my Flash version of Firefox to have access to my normal Firefox. So I want to keep them separated. Uh, but this ends up... Oh, yes, this is... Um, oh, and wouldn't it be like uh, easier to solve your problem to have uh, one uh, dirty virtual machine separated from the rest of the computer? Uh, but what would that dirty virtual machine do? Like you could run and install all the suspicious programs, like those but, uh, if I, but all of the programs that I'm running on my system are suspicious. And so all of those programs would need access to all of my data because I'm using some program to, like, like even the program that accesses my bank account, like does my bank account, Moya Banka, right? That's a horribly suspicious program because KB <laughs> is the worst company in the universe. So even the program that accesses my bank account is an untrusted program. And I don't want it to have full so access to my system. Why, why are you like, protecting yourself? Because if you don't trust your uh, banking program, why are you protecting it? Because I can't protect my banking program from fucking up the internet banking, but at least I can protect it from, for example, publishing shit to my GitHub account. So I want to separate all of my programs from each other to limit liabilities. I just see that you are uh, heavily limiting the usability, and uh, not sure whether the trade-off is supposed mm -hmm. to. The trade-off is to at uh, another Axis of uh, access yeah. control. Yeah, I can see, but uh, when, you, when, when, when you add human behavior, that after a while, so maybe not Timothy, but for me, it would be like pissing me off, like having uh, five different running instances of Firefox, and I need to remember. Well, you which could has if access to my if files. you if you have a problem with the five different running uh, instances of Firefox, you can always make a version of Firefox that has Flash and. WebGL enabled by default. That's not a problem. I just like to be paranoid. <laughs> so I created a blank PDF. So the program I downloaded didn't work, but at least it didn't have full access to my system. 
And that's actually another nice thing because I don't want a program that's no. simply faulty and, and, and to be able to question. question. If you uh, didn't uh, run it uh, through the subuser, uh, would it work, or does it, or did, uh, did the subuser screw the program up? I don't know yet. Yeah. I haven't figured yes. that one out yet. <laughs> I don't think it screwed it up because I've been running I've been running a lot of programs in subuser. I developed the entire subuser in subuser, right? <laughs> I've been using Firefox in subuser. I've been using Git in subuser, Vim in subuser, and I, I I'm quite no offense. No. <laughs> yes, but okay. and uh, another question: How do you solve the problem with uh, X and X systems? Uh, okay, so, so you have it like one category, but it's so, so there's a little, there's a, currently uh, programs that have access to your X11 server have just un, unlimited access to your X11 server, which isn't good. Uh, and the plan is to make it so it goes through SSH, which has a thing called the X security extensions. And the X security extensions uh, prevent the program from being able to uh, uh, do a, uh, captures of global key presses and such, and uh, other things. It's, uh, it makes it so it can't access your clipboard when it's not focused and such. <coughs> so with the um, security extensions, it should be much more secure. And there's another layer of security that we could go to, which would be to uh, run through VNC or something like that. But I haven't looked into that yet. And there's actually a bit of a, there's a, bit of a hairiness involved uh, when you start getting into the SSH uh, category of things that you don't want to end up giving a program a network interface to do SSH when all you really want is to give it access to your X11 server. Uh, so I'm, this is why it hasn't been a trivial thing. Uh, is because I'm trying to do this correctly, which is uh, going to be uh, launching SSH uh, and running SSH through a socket file and rather th than through the network. Mm -hmm. And do you think it will be like terrible overhead? Yeah. Uh, no, it won't be terribly over. It's not any worse than running JavaScript on your computer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, the overhead for Angry Birds is is quite terrible. Uh, so, and I don't think that's any worse than anything else we're doing here. In terms of disk, disk space, you can do a lot of crazy things to reduce the disk overhead uh, because uh, right now we're doing a very simple installation method. We're going from the base system and we're building up from it. Uh, but we can always build a, more, a, a better sharing mo model where we're sharing more between the various images. Uh, but this way is much simpler. And I think this space is cheap. So I'm not worried about it. Any other questions? No? Are there some, some other limitations you didn't, didn't speak about? OK, so, so you might have noticed that in Firefox there were no icons. Uh, there's, there's some known bugs. Um, one of the nice things about this project is, um, well, I think it's nice, uh, the way I've been running it. Uh, that if you go to subuser.org um, and you look at the issues, uh, I don't actually have a, um, a label by design or won't fix. I have a label design flaw and I don't know how to fix this. Um, so uh, if you look at our issues uh, and you uh, so you go over to the issues here, and you go and you select the 1.0 thing. So we have some, some catches. Being a member of the Docker group is the same as giving the user full access to the root, root access. Uh, is a big issue, and there's going to be a fix for this. But I can't fix it because it's a bug in Docker. Um, uh, Subuser programs can fill up your hard disk because they're mounting volumes that are normal volumes. Uh, <laughs> you see, like Vim, since it ac has access to your uh, current working directory, it could, uh, it could write bullshit to your current working directory and fill up your hard disk. Mm -hmm. 
Um, oh, uh, that one, this one will be fixed. This one we can fix. Um, X11 is horribly insecure. Uh, sometimes Vim hard freezes. That's an interesting one. I have no idea why. Uh, <laughs> and it happens only with uh, only only sub users. I don't know. I don't have Vim. I, I don't have a normal Vim installed even. <laughs> okay. um, Emacs.nw freezes indefinitely on uh, startup. Chromium doesn't work at all because Chromium's uh, meth uh, Chromium's security model. Uh, involves uh, running, so, so actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but when you launch Chromium, Chromium actually runs as root. It has set UID root. Um, <laughs> and then it does something very similar. It does something very similar to Android. It, it gives each of its uh, tabs some special user space to live in, so which is supposed to be more secure. And this model does not work with subuser at all. It doesn't work with Linux containers. So Chromium do just doesn't work. Um, so those are the real gotchas that I've run into so far. And have you tried running some other applications, like Firefox or Wing or things like it, this in a subuser? Uh, I've run uh, the entire Haskell platform, which is a <laughs> compiler. Mm -hmm. It works. Um, Emacs works, uh, except for the no window mode. Um, LibreOffice, of course. Um, what else? Skype? I, I think that's it for now that I've tried. Uh, you can, uh, I'll show you here, programs that can be installed and are known to work. Docker in Docker, um, Emacs, Fire, a bunch of Firefox versions, IRSSI works, um, Xterm works. Skype is quite an achievement. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, Skype is a nice thing to have. Um, well, and when you compare it to some Aparm or Domoyo or some other things like this, what's the bi biggest advantage? Okay, so the big advantage, uh, well, for me, the big advantage is the philosophy. Aparmer is really, uh, let's protect the root of the, the, the root user of the system. It doesn't, uh, if you look at Firefox's Aparmer profile for Ubuntu, uh, you'll see a uh, slash home slash star slash star star, which means that it has full access to everybody's home directory, yeah. which is really the opposite of what I'm going for with subuser, where Firefox has access to your downloads directory. Uh, so it's a difference in philosophy. Um, and also, like, if you look at Firefox's subuser profile, um, it's this. <coughs> I didn't spell App Harbor correctly. Um, I think this will be a good one. Um, yeah, so this is for Totem Player, which is a plugin to uh, Firefox, but let's find Firefox. Um, where is Firefox? Here's Firefox. Here is Firefox's App Armor profile. Here is Firefox's subuser permissions.json file. Uh, you don't have to deal with any system files with subuser. And with uh, AppArmor, you have to deal with every system file, which is a big difference. Um, and the other difference is that AppArmor is going to have to have a different profile for every Linux distribution, because the system files are in different places. Maybe there's one thing I don't understand about the docs, the system. When you upgrade the system, you need to upgrade all the containers, or it's automatic, or how does it, how does it work? Okay, so uh, for this, uh, this is a not so nice part of the system, but <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you can see that it's labeled with a time, last update time, uh, which is the last um, time when we knew that Firefox needed an update. Um, and we can uh, run the command subuser mark is needing update and then push uh, to the git repository and then when you pull from the git repository it'll then warn you that Firefox is out of date and you can then run uh, subuser update all and it will reinstall Firefox thus giving you an up to date version of Firefox. Okay. So if you if you are making some updates to system and you have like ten containers it will cost you like ten times more time to 
to do all the things, or maybe not ten times because you can do it lazy. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, it does have, uh, since installation is has a higher overhead, then update will also have a higher up overhead. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, I can fix this in the future, but so far you have to actually close <laughs> Firefox in order to update it, which isn't so nice. I could, I could make it so it would delete the old files later, uh, but I don't want to do that because I like to be tidy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one more thing uh, came from the, from the base of the Docker system, uh, the access to probably directories or permissions be made like live. Can it be made by user prompt or some API, whatever? It could be made live. Uh, it, it's technically feasible to make it live, yeah. but it's not easy and it has its own security implications. Um, I don't know if we'll do it. Uh, well, and I, it's I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with running like terminal uh, instance where I would have some like control console and each time the application will try to access something it doesn't have permissions to do. Like it, it could probably see all the files but uh, each time it, sh it uh, tries to open, write, delete or move the file uh, the system would notify me and allow me to set like time to rule for the, mm -hmm. the application, like for the, for instance or for ten minutes or for forever, whatever. Well, right now. Uh, because you know, you know what? Yes, I'm, I'm just, yes. I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. running each application in its own sandbox. Uh, sandbox is kind of overhead. Using using the virtualization is kind of overhead. There's no so overhead virtualization. There's no virtual overhead. Yeah, uh, virtualization. For sure. But uh, it's just a shroot, just a better kind of shroot. Uh huh. Okay. There's no overhead but for that. still, still, it's kind of not dynamic way of how to deal with the application itself. Uh, yes. Um, so if you're a user that likes to go file open some file and use the file open dialog. Uh, this is going to be a change for you. If you're a user that likes to go in your file browser and right-click and open with LibreOffice, yeah. then this will be completely transparent to you. Uh, no, there, there will be no change because you, you would see all the files and once the application tries to do any operation on the file, on the, on the particular file or directory or whatever, some file system node, it, the console or some UI system will notify you if you will allow this for how long, under what conditions. But this makes only effectively the file system read only, but uh, still have access to all files. Well, it, it would give it would give it the ability to know which files were on your computer, which is maybe not a good thing. Maybe a good it, maybe it's fine, but it no 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 just yeah just just this case you can you can still you can still make. Uh, Whatever, like I'm running uh, instance of probably OpenOffice, and I would allow it to see some part of my documentary tree, and uh, yes, I could limit probably uh, white or blacklist uh, over those directories, and yes, I would have granular access to the files themselves. Like I could, I could have them saved in some cryptic, cryptic names and. The fire, the the application, for for instance, the uh, open office will know even what, what's inside, mm -hmm. unless I would have approved it to read it. Uh, that would be possible, but I'd, it's it's really not yeah. a priority to me, and it would be quite an investment to do it. Currently, uh, currently it's you know what, like like moving moving files from one sandbox to another sandbox, or mounting mounting virtual hard drives, whatever. It's still overhead for the transparency to user. Uh, yes, but it's not that bad because <coughs> <coughs> I think like uh, That's so if I'm in the sub-user presentation directory and I type uh, libre-office uh, libre um, sub-user yeah, firm then lab then, uh, and then you then want to open file in another directory you will you will open a separate instance of open yes, space. Yes. Yes. It's okay. it's a matter of uh, of work method. If you're used to using the file open method, 
then you'll have to change your methodology. But actually, if you're used to using the better method, and it's better because the terminal or the file browser is a standardized interface, whereas the file open dialog is a non-standardized interface. Thus, users will be able to find their files more quickly in a terminal or in a file browser that they're used to. Like, I'm used to Nautilus, but uh, there's 10 different kinds of file open dialogs. So, so really, it's a better system to, to do it this way, so it's really not a philosophic priority for me to, to make a dynamic system. And it's also potentially insecure to give your the program ability to see which files you have on your system. Okay. Mm. But it would be possible. Technically possible. Yeah, it's technically possible. Great. Uh, any other questions? So there. I guess I'm done. <laughs>